In this video, I'm going to show you how I took this very boring builder grade door and window trim and gave it a more customized craftsman style look with a minimal demo and budget friendly approach. You may recall my last video where I shared my no demo taller baseboard hack, which is a great complimentary project to the one I'm sharing today. In this hallway, my main focus for the updates has been adding character to my trim and doors. So let's jump into it. So to start off this trim project, I'm just using a straight edge to mark a guideline over the top of the trim. I'm only going to be removing the upper strip at a 90 degree angle. So where the original casing were mitered edges, this new trim will just be butted edges. This is a very common style in craftsmen and farmhouse style homes that you see. After my straight horizontal lines are drawn, I'm taking a razor blade box cutter and slicing through the caulking that's holding the trim to the door jam itself, as well as over where the wall meets the trim. This will help loosen up this portion for removal. Next, to fully remove the upper trim, I'm using my oscillating tool to cut a horizontal line where I've previously drawn my guideline. I took it nice and slow to avoid cutting into the drywall. So once my upper trim is cut and separated from the lower vertical trim, I then took a crowbar and a rubber mallet to gently remove the trim from the wall. In addition to the caulk, these are just held up by a few nails. Aside from how beautiful the end result is, I really love this project because there is very little demolition and very little waste. Next, we just have a few nails to remove. I find gripping with needle nose pliers and removing in a rolling, twisting fashion is easiest and takes the least amount of muscles. Now we get to create the new upper trim. So you'll wanna start by measuring the width of your window and door casings, measuring from the outer edge to the outer edge. I'm starting by cutting a one by six primed common board to the exact length of the width of the door or window. Following the one by six cut, I'm then cutting a one by two, one inch longer than the one by six. And I'll show you my layout in just a second. So here's a nice preview visual. The one by two will lay on its wide edge on the existing vertical trim. And the one by six will sit on top of that like this with a half inch overhang on both sides. Next, we'll be cutting a cove molding trim. This is the trickiest part of this project, but even still not that tricky. You'll just set your miter to a 45 degree angle to make your cut, ensuring that the short edge of your miter cut is the same length as the one by six. For me, I found it easiest to make the 45 degree cut on one edge and then lay it up against the one by six and mark the other side with a pencil to ensure precise cuts and avoiding any measuring errors. I then made another small 45 degree cut for the little piece that will wrap around the one by six. Once all put together, this is what it will look like. The last cut we'll need to make with the miter saw will be this one by two that will sit on top of the one by six and the cove molding. To determine this length, I first cut the cove molding and dry fitted it and then marked the exact length of the one by two with a pen. Again, to avoid measuring in mathematical errors, I found this to be easiest. Now everything is ready for assembly. Using wood glue, clamps, and brad nails, I fitted everything together. Again, the one by two on the bottom, the one by six on top of that, cove molding overlapping the top portion of the one by six, followed by another one by two on the very top. This piece I'm assembling is for the laundry doors, which is why it's extra long. But if you need to piece together a few one by twos, simply choose to do it only over the top one by two strip because you'll be able to mask that really easily later on with a little bit of wood filler and paint. Thank you. 
here's what they all looked like assembled, pre-paint, and installation. Before painting, I'm going to be doing a little bit of wood filling over the nail holes and any seams, like those 1x2s that I pieced together, that need a little more masking. This will give a nice, smooth, seamless surface for paint. Once this wood filler was dry, I sanded it down using a 220 grit and painted it the color I chose for my trim being Sculptor Clay by Bear and a Satin Finish. I just forgot to film those steps. Now back to the door jam. To prep the wall for installing the new beautiful trim, I'm removing any extra caulk using a straight razor blade and a putty knife to ensure a smooth surface to work with. I'll definitely want to install these new, slightly heavier trim pieces over studs. I could certainly go grab my stud finder, but a little trick I learned, if you peep inside the door jam, you can see the screws where the studs are located. So I just stuck a piece of tape on the wall corresponding to these studs for later guidance. Now for my favorite part, getting these up on the wall. Using my brad nailer, I simply tacked up the new trim over the studs, no adhesives needed. To create a seamless fit, I then used paintable caulk to caulk those same areas that I previously loosened up with the box cutter, being where the trim meets the wall, where it meets the vertical original trim, as well as the door frame itself. And I love this side-by-side -side of the before and after. What a huge impact. For this installment here over the window, I did run into a lack of studs. So instead, I focused my nails over the horizontal wood, making up the upper portion of the window opening. And it felt plenty secure. Um, if you run into this problem, adhesives like uh, wood glue would be a great alternative. Repeating those exact same processes, I completed the entire hallway just using the different measurements from my different door and window openings. Once everything was attached to the wall, I'll need to do just a little bit more filling over the nail holes left. I'm first using this little nail set to set my nails deeper into the wood to provide a nice hole to fill. And I'm using my favorite wood filler by Ace. Once these are dry, I sanded them with 220 grit and did just a little bit of touch up paint over the filled areas. 
You'll see I'm also taking this opportunity to fill in the hardware holes left from previously hung curtain rods. You may notice how the edges of these wood pieces show a lot of open grain. You can paint this as is, but it won't result in a smooth finish no matter how many coats of paint you try to put on. Over here, this is more of the finish that we're looking for, nice and smooth, and I'll show you how I achieved this. Using the same Ace Wood Putty, I mixed it with water until it was about the consistency of a custard. Berkeley says, ooh, I like custard. Then using a small artist brush, I just painted over that open grain. And once this is dry, you can sand it with a 220 grit and just use a little bit of touch up paint for a really super smooth finish. And in case you're wondering what I did with this little nook here, I ended up just butting the edges of both trim pieces together to look like one continuous piece. And there you have it, a relatively easy update for your interior door casing. Honestly, this can probably be completed in a weekend, especially if you're doing a relatively small space with only a few doors and windows. By keeping the vertical trim original, we've saved on material, demo, work time, and waste. Here's a quick reminder of where we started, and here is the after. Aside from the new header casing, I painted the trim and doors a contrasting color using Sculptor Clay by Bear, and gave the walls a fresh coat of Swiss Coffee, also by Bear. I used Caviar by Sherwin-Williams for a little contrast on the laundry room doors, and you'll notice I dressed up the doors with new hardware from Nostalgic Warehouse. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments, and I would love it if you subscribe to this channel. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.